So uh, that's a great day. We have uh, the first session with our athletic resilience course. Athletic resilience. Yeah. Okay. Misha, you've designed this course for uh, for athletes. Um, it's based on the lifesaver course. But uh, tell me, how does how does uh, this course uh, differ, and what can what really will athletes get out of doing this course? What's in it for them? Well, um, we are trying actually to do the impossible. Are we? Okay. <laughs> That's a totally unique what we're doing because we are trying to connect fitness with health yeah and that's um that's a pretty tr tricky thing to do it is you no know, because when we're talking fitness we are actually uh, rejecting health actually is that true because you well, normally associate one with the other you know if you're fit very, you're very often because we uh, when we do fitness we want to uh, it's an application. You see, we want to do kind of an application to yeah. fit something, to fit something, to fit some kind of requirements. Yeah. And when we're fitting some kind of requirements, then it's always a priority order. So yeah. what we prioritize, we prioritize to uh, to hit, you know, to reach the targets in in the in the number of minutes, for example, to run uh, uh, some. Um, um, so, uh, uh, um, a number of kilometers or miles in uh, some number of uh, amount of minutes. And that's what fitness is. So if we're fit no. for one, we are fit for fight or we are fit for biking, it's not necessarily we are becoming more and more healthy. And that's the very big dilemma. What What is actually, what do we want? And what I think it is actually possible if we... Um, if we work in a little bit different way, we can actually be fit for our fights and mm -hmm. at the same time, we will be healthy. And that's what why we are combining the 50 weeks to, um, to health course with athletic course. Um, we have some special feature in athletic course, like for example, we're talking specially to athletes. And that's why I'm very happy this is... Um, we start. We just started the course, and we already have like uh, uh, eight subscribers in the first uh, in the first week. It's a good start. But listen, I mean, uh, yeah. athletes, athletes. You know, people are serious about being an athlete. Yeah. You yeah. know, you can be a casual athlete. I'm sure there's a lot of casual athletes who just run for fun or whatever. But athletes, you know, it's all about performance. And I know that uh, you're talking about targets, and that's how how athletes are. But you know. I think athletes will be really interested to hear how they can combine good health and fitness to actually improve their performance or at least prove, improve their resilience, get injured less. Exactly. And that's one of the things because you see being injured, it's crucial not being injured for an athlete, but that's a kind of part of a health. That's yeah. part of a health. Very, very often athletes think, on, think only about winning very often yeah and uh, the priority like for example uh, strengthen the ankles for example yeah. like you know, that's very often for runners or for tennis players yeah. we we have ankle injuries yeah or basketball players or volleyball players we have ankle injuries oh that's bad so that's really bad and you see for for just when we're talking about health when you have ankle injury you you cannot walk, you cannot train, you cannot sustain your health. For athletes, it's really bad because they cannot train. Uh, yeah. The overall level of uh, <clears throat> athletic performance goes down. So yeah. if we tr um, there's a lot of different things in the course that will um, uh, actually um, both the physical resilience and the immune resilience and the mental resilience are gaining something together. And the physical resilience, that's for example, uh, um, how to train, how to train uh, efficiently, but to train in the way that you are strengthening the different body parts. So they are getting resilient. We can, we're also gonna work with this. And that's a very interesting area. For example, I know for myself, from my own experience, I've been, I've been playing tennis, uh, uh, many many years yeah. many many years 
And um, I had always had injuries, always injuries in my lower legs, lower, um, um, you know, fibers and ankles, different kind of things. And every time for a fiber, it's like it takes two or three weeks. Yeah. You know, when you love doing uh, your sport, you loved, I love tennis. It's a big problem. It's a big problem. You can't, and then you can't even walk normally. So I found out when I, for example, do this exercise, um, that's actually one very good fitness coach. He was a coach of a Danish basket team for women. Yeah. And uh, they had a lot of ankle injuries. And he said, for example, that do this exercise five minutes a day. But do it every day. Yeah. You will yeah. save, you will save uh, what he said. You will save uh, like at least three weeks, four weeks yearly. At oh, that's least, fantastic. Or maybe one and a half months. Because that's what um, many athletes, they use on injuries. Wow. Yeah, during the year. So one single exercise yeah. uh, every day, you have to do every day. You have to, we have to work out every day because that's what, uh, if we want to li live a long life and if we would, don't want to die yeah. in the hospital, um, after long times of sickness, I don't. That's my no. big priority. <laughs> Because I okay. want to live a meaningful life, you know, and uh, and um, being able to move, that's the big part of it. Because I cannot enjoy my world. Okay, Misha, I think uh, I think before we start off, you better uh, explain to uh, watchers, viewers, what are the basic tenets of the lifesaver? What is the protocol that, uh, that you're using? Because you, you, you combine many, many, uh, many things together, or many things, but you, you combine the vital things together um, to create the lifesaver. Exactly. What I do, uh, what we do, um, I look at the, you know, at health and, and, um, at fitness, at performance, at resilience, with the eyes of an engineer. Okay. And, you know, engineers, we are trained to connect the dots, to mm. see, um, you know, um, the dependence in the um, seemingly different things. But they are dependent, they, uh, they, they kind of connected, they interconnected, they are interdependent. So what we, as engineers, we do, we see these dependencies, yeah. We find out what is the optimal way to work um, on, w w in the two directions, but so they contribute to each other to uh, yeah. the uh, uh, to make a strong synergetic effect. And the synergetic yeah. effect that's engineering. So what we do, okay. uh, we see at the, we look at uh, health um, from different angles, and not like mm -hmm. specialists, but you have to know what you're talking about. That's the that's the part of being a specialist. So I, I, I know um, uh, I'm a specialist in breathing, and um, by working many, many years in these areas, connecting them together, I also know a lot about movement, about strong mm -hmm. movement. Um, I learned about um, immunity a lot. Uh, I learned yeah. um, about nutrition because um, I use it practically on my clients. Uh, and about mental side, because I've been uh, working many years as a mental trainer for sports, um, for athletes, for elite athletes, and for um, and for artists that have stage fright, things like that. And um, those are areas I saw as engineer always. I just wanted to connect the dots. And what I've been uh, starting to do from the start, just trying to see the difference. Well, what is, uh, how the pattern of movement affects the mental resilience. For example, how what okay. we eat affect how we breathe. How what we eat and when we eat affect how we digest, ingest and digest food. How, um, how we move, how we hold the position of our, of the, uh, the angle of the head and angle of sight how does it, uh, 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 which connection it has with immunity and with mental resilience? You wouldn't normally think they were connected. 
you will uh, and i suppose it's also uh, sleep is important uh, i guess in this connection yeah exactly there's a lot of um, work with well that's that's what we see i have a uh, something i call sacred protocol um and my protocol it's it consists of different inspirations so that everything that i uh, my way is just the way of looking at it connecting it and working with it so what i work i work with um it's like a star it's like a uh, a star which is yeah which you can show you know because we are star formed actually we're a star shape when we spread our yeah. hands that's the uh that's the um that's the this Angles of the star? Angles? How do you say about the star? Yeah, the, the points of the, the star. pointers. Yeah, exactly. The head, and we have two legs, that's five. Okay? So what we have here, this parallel, it's about acquisition of energy from the environment. And uh, before we uh, use something, we have to acquire it, and we have to optimize acquisition. Okay? And that's how we breathe. And that's how you yeah. take a technique, the technique for optimization of uh, automatical breathing patterns 24 7 mm -hmm. both for health and resilience and for healing of um, lifestyle disease and then i optimize we optimize how we eat what we eat what kind of micro macronutrients do we get and how optimally do we get it what do we need how do we run better uh what um, what kind of um meal plans what kind of uh uh, nutritional plants are best for the energy for the overall stable energy during the day what is best uh, to uh, uh, to uh, to conquer um, lifestyle disease to battle okay. lifestyle disease that's the acquisition of energy and then we have something called resilience triangle the resilience yeah. triangle that's the head that's the mental resilience uh, uh, the one one leg it's physical resilience and the another leg it's an immune resilience when connected together, that's the way we distribute the energy. Because what we need, we need mental energy, we need physical energy, we need uh, immune energy. So when we acquire something and we do it, we we optimize the acquisition. Then we can optimize the distribution too. And here, that's a very very strong 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 dependency in the in the distribution. Um, very very strong. So we really need to be careful to distribute it evenly according to our needs. And our needs are maybe different every day. And the level, the overall level of energy in kilojoules or kilocalories are different from day to day. So this pool of energy is only 100% every day. Never 120, 120, but it's always different in, uh, in kilojoules or kilocalories. Yeah. Uh, and the immunity, we need always. We need maybe different amount of physical uh, movement every day a little bit different but we need the stable immunity and the okay. mental part has to be stable too okay Amisha, the um um we, we do talk about athletes i can this be applied to to um to any sport any athlete i mean is it is it just as valid for say a sprinter in a field in a field and track uh, to uh, a golf player to I mean, is is it is it very broad uh, in that respect? It's not just for high performance no, athletes. No, for everybody. Because you see, um, the for example, let's talk about mentality, the mental part. That's yeah. a very very big um, uh, part, a very big aspect for all the athletes. That's the mental part. The physical resilience. That's one thing. But uh, for example, in tennis or in golf, you say that uh, the eighty percent of winning. Is the mental part mm -hmm. if you are professional then you have the techniques all the techniques you have trained the techniques for many many years and then what do you have you are there and you are still uh not winning because there's other people that have trained many many years so um what's what can make difference here that's the mental part that's uh, the power of stable focus you are not over tensing because over tension that we, we call that's a very very special area of work we're going to work with athletes very much with understanding the physiology of um, antagonist muscle group and how we can work with this connecting it with mental part the physical part mm -hmm. actually the immunity too by breathing for example or by relaxation 
There's many techniques that we use here, but uh, many techniques that I use in, in the program, it's a, it's a, it, it comes from martial arts. In the martial arts, um, the, the power of mental strength is very, very crucial. That's how we actually control uh, our physiology and control the, uh, the survival That's yeah. by mental strength. Would, would you say that, uh, you know, many athletes are, are, uh, are not in touch with their body? I mean, one of the things that uh, for everybody today in this uh, busy life is that we tend to be too much in our heads. Do you think athletes are generally guilty of not listening to their bodies and then translating that into, into uh, performance? Yes, I, 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 I think um, um, they tend to because... Uh, uh, they need to perform, and performance is always uh, targets, mm -hmm. always target-oriented way of working. And mm -hmm. that's when we are when we target-oriented, we tend not to listen so much to some other signals that comes from the side, and that's your body too. That's your body signals. They tend to override body signals, and that's uh, that's the hard part. But not the the athletes that invest in their life invest in their sports and thinking um really uh that's a real investment that's to think both about um um resilience health and resilience um performance okay so are you saying that the people who who uh, are perhaps serious athletes but not not professional athletes uh because they go after targets that they could be actually damaging their bodies uh, in the uh, way many, they... Many people, uh, many athletes damaging their bodies. You, they see, for example, you can say that uh, among Olympic athletes, um, there's a about 20% of Olympic athletes attending uh, the Olympic Games, uh, they, they, um, they ask about the permission to use uh, anti-asthmatic drugs. 20%. And you would say, well, you would think the, you know, Olympic athletes, that's the healthiest. But the 20, if the 20% 20 of Olympic athletes uh, have asthma, severe asthma, maybe, that's a, that's a problem. That's the wrong, are, uh, wrong technique used in training. They are under, under prioritizing their health. And that's, that's the image, that's the, uh, the picture of fitness versus health. And there's a lot of other things, you know. Many runners have problems with the with the prolapse, with the discs, with the uh, uh, knee problems. Um, you know, weightlifters. You can talk about um, many different sportsmen. But I really believe that every one of us we have to be aware of this, and then we find the right balance. For every one of us so this course is a tool to get the knowledge the physiological knowledge of what how to be healthy and athletic at the same time and uh, the knowledge how to uh, start and retain the strong strong process of lifestyle change that will uh, intermittently it will it will it will lead you to the good place but you have to start and you have to do it every day. And that's why it's 50 weeks. We do it every day and we have both a uh, big overview, but we also have uh, very, very concrete things about athletes. And I, I have uh, some very, very interesting items today to talk, especially for cyclists, because uh, we have, uh, okay. yeah, we are, I'm really lucky we have, uh, because we have a, uh, um, very very interesting people cyclists from um, from great britain um that uh, from your native country <laughs> that uh, are very inquisitive and i made the podcast for them mm -hmm. um and um they will um i will just a second <clears throat> i will just write uh, the uh there um be cool just a second i will copy it from twitter just a second notifications um and they are very very inquisitive and they already 
a part of our course. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I mean, called, you school about Systems that. Academy. Yeah. Just a second. Let me write it down here. Okay. Cycle Systems Academy. And guys, if some um, some one of you are there are uh, listening here, so please come um, and ask. We have two seats here, so you can uh, get a seat and you can uh, talk to us. Uh, we can have a little conversation. You just can ask a question. And remember, no um, stupid questions here. Never, never. I always say, please be, uh, I write here, be inquisitive. So there's no such thing as a stupid question. No stupid questions. Could you write it, please? Uh, Steve, be inquisitive. No stupid uh, questions here. And um, I really, um, so this is, a, this is an open session because this is a session both for people that are in the athletic course and for people that are interested in uh, um, athletics. So, um, um we're talking about i just write on uh, we're talking about um performance yeah in athletic athletics okay so Misha, um cyclists um you know when i think of cyclists there's, there's a few types of cyclists there's a uh, um there's uh road racers there's uh sprinters there's the famous uh six days uh, cycling on on a on a on a banked track there's um uh cycle motocross there's all sorts of things but i mean what what, what is unique to cycling i would say it's, it's stamina isn't it is a, is a very uh, a very important uh, uh point for cyclists what what is interesting for cycling you know actually i really want you guys who are uh, this cycling team from England. I have some people from Canada too. So uh, please ask and uh, give us um, some very good inspiration for questions. Yes, because that's the uh, they really need um, you know endurance. When you're a cyclist, you need endurance. It's not uh, it, it has a very very big value. What you have eaten, what you are burning. Are you burning carbs? Are you burning fat? how optimally do you burn fat very very big you know how um how are you using lactate for energy or lactate is a pain in the ass for you so <laughs> lactate because when you optimize the uh, uh the fat burning you also optimize uh the use of lactate in the muscles and the the, the inactive muscle muscles actually are um using um are making using lactate as energy and then it's a kind of a cycle and then it's released via, via glycogen it's a very very interesting cycle um when how they breathe it, that has a very very big uh, value the optimization of breathing so they're not panting so what we actually for cyclists they have to be able to enjoy the race actually wouldn't it be great the race will be like enjoyment yeah instead of pain and suffering well instead of pain and suffering just because you want to reach this goal that's what that's the uh um uh like like the idea it has the uh, the, the fixed idea that they fix you know that you have to win the race and that's not not necessarily very enjoyable right you have this yeah. idea, yeah. And you do, but it's possible to enjoy. It's possible to enjoy fights. It's possible to enjoy a tennis. Uh, well, I know it's tennis, but we're talking now about cyclists. Um, there's a lot of um, interesting things about a mental side, um, about um, the physical training. Um, yeah. um, and you know, I want. I have some kind of things. Uh, for example, Tara Humara runners. You heard that some Mexican. Mexican a tribe, Tarahumara. Okay. No, I didn't know that. Yeah, Tarahumara. And they were very known that they are, for example, running, they are running like extreme distances, like 200 kilometers a day, 300 kilometers a day, like, like five marathons 
uh, six marathons a day. And they do it effortlessly. They, they have a special uh, um, running technique called forefoot, forefoot running. And that's what forefoot running comes from. And that's very mm -hmm. much uh, optimizing the energy, uh, how you, ex the energy expenditure. And the other thing, which is a very interesting, they run with closed mouths. Uh, okay. Very interesting for um, for like ultra runners and uh, for for people that are uh, are cycling in uh, ultra dist di distances. Uh, the cyclists, it's actually possible to run the whole race with closed mouth. It's possible, and I can, for example, uh, you see, I have this tape that I use. I have this tape uh, both uh, very often when I sleep, when I'm on the, on tennis court. I play with tennis court. If you see some of my tennis videos, then you know when I come to the camera, I take <laughs> I take the first thing I take I take this one off and then I start talking. And then normally, you know, when we're talking, one of the very, very crucial thing, that's how much the pulse falls when it reaches the maximum. So mm -hmm. this is the pulse rate, how much it falls in one minute. So normally it's like maybe 20 or 30, slowly, but very, very good levels. It's uh, over 40, 45, 50. So my, my pulse rate, it, uh, it falls 55, 55 beats a minute. So actually when I take this one off, mm -hmm. after having, you know, running like crazy, doing interval, very, very hard interval tra training, I can yeah. speak already after 10 seconds, normally, without... Wow. So when, so I, normally, you, when I do the tennis videos, I take this off. But you know, you know, Misha, what you're saying is that getting pain, uh, getting pleasure out of doing this and not panting. You know, when I see people running or you see them, um, you know, they want to imitate the people who have just run uh, 100, 200, 400 meters. And they seem to think that this this panting and, and collapsing on the floor and, and you know, uh, with their head between their knees is somehow beneficial to their health or somehow will make them fitter or healthier. Yeah, they, they have this conception of uh, the, the, the harder they do, the harder they work, the best is for their health. That's a misconception. That's totally misunder misunderstanding, total misunderstanding. But everyone does it. Everyone does it. But because so are they, are, we, are, we are obsessed with results, that's why. Are, they, are these people actually, you know, they, I mean, the idea, some people run, you know, like with us, we, we, uh, we're looking to, uh, to, um, uh, to improve longevity and this and the other. But are you, are you saying that by by uh, by doing this uh, sort of uh, um, target orientated, forget about your body, you know, it, it will catch up, uh, you know, this is good for your body. They're actually shortening their lives, perhaps, on this. They are what? Um, excuse me. They may be shortening their lifespan by, That's what by they doing. Do. That's what they do. Actually, you know, the, wow. the, the, there's a lot of things in this. The faster your heart beat on a given level of um well energy expenditure or on a given level of work the faster the shorter you live actually because the heart has a resource uh, as every muscle it has a resource as every mechanism it has a resource and resource it's about 2.6 billion contractions that's the resource for the muscle fibers of the heart 2.6. Yeah. Somebody, some scientists say 2 billion, some scientists say 3 billion, but the average value they're talking about, that's 2.6. So you can see this, this, the slower your heart beats and the faster it falls to the normal level, to the normal pulse from the same amount of exercise, the longer you live. The other the thing about, about breathing, it's, um, mm -hmm. it's, completely, it's completely the same. Um, we can measure breathing with something called control pause. And the control pause, it's the, um, uh, shows actually how your, uh, how your breathing center, uh, the degree of dysfunctionality of your breathing center, because the, um, 
the science says actually that about 85% of the modern Western population has dysfunctional breathing patterns. 85% of people, 85% of the Western population has dysfunctional breathing patterns. And that means that our breathing center reacts in, a, in an abnormal way to the, uh, uh, to, the, to the carbon dioxide in the blood. And that's what actually regulates breathing. And we can retrain this. And this is make our into a super centenarians, maybe. Or maybe if not into super centenarians, that at least we're not going to die in the hospital after a long time of disease. And that's the biggest, that's for me, has a much greater value than winning a point of two in tennis or yeah. uh, doing a, a run in a faster time. Or maybe we can uh, actually do the both. Now, is that okay. what the, the thing about this course? Um, yeah. I want to have um, a very interesting uh, thing uh, to, the, to, the, to the cyclists and actually to the other people. You know, these sessions like that, it's going to be questions and answers. Now, I asked once, guys, do you have anything to ask? I want you to be inquisitive. There's no such thing as a stupid questions. And... Please do it because it's a part of our learning. Every question will make us wiser. All of us that are listening to this podcast. So please ask the questions. So now we don't have much time because actually we have another session in English together right after that one for health together with Steve. Right, Steve? So, yeah. so we have uh, 22 minutes. Well, actually 20, 20 minutes because we have to uh, stop five minutes too. Seven. So if you don't ask, we are stopping a bit before. So okay. now yep. I'll give you a technical. Okay. Do you have something, Steve? No, I was just thinking. It's going back to this thing about uh, heartbeat. Um, but you know, I I, I was always uh, under the impression. Maybe this is maybe you put me right on this. That if you do uh, heart training, you know, that, that is taking your heart up to uh, the maximum pulse rate, you know, relative to your age. So taking it up to 180 or something. Yeah. Then training the heart muscle in that way, your resting heartbeat would be, uh, would be lower. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's, that's the conventional thing. But, but what you're saying is it's, 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 it's not necessarily a good thing or not necessarily uh, beneficial to actually push your heart muscle to the limit. Yeah, but it's not, you, you cannot say like that. It's, it's not to the limit, exactly. So it's the best thing actually is to train on the 80% of your VO2 max, 85, 80% of VO2 max. And that's where you get really resilient. And that's when you have a possibility actually to train breathing because you don't have possibility to train breathing at your maximum energy expenditure. It's not possible. No, you are, you are yeah, but, but Thank you very much for this one, Steve. It's a very good question. Thank you very much. I love you for good questions. This question. Well, someone asked is, the question. This question is great because we have to train at 80, 85% because otherwise we cannot work healthy in a healthy way. And that's a, and I, we were going to talk a lot about it. Not like now we have some 15 minutes or something, and I want to talk about biomechanics. And you see, for cyclists, it's interesting. How do you sit on your on how do you call it seat on the bike? Saddle. 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 Yeah. How do you sit on the saddle? saddle? Because you see, if you if you if you sit like that, if you if you sit like that, slouching. Or if you, yeah. or if you untuck your tail, it's like tucking and untucking, yeah. right? Do you understand what I mean? It's a little yeah. bit different for men and women because we men we have uh, some organs that are sometimes yeah. can be, um, you know, in the way. In the way. Exactly, exactly. But having said that, that's a that's a question of alignment of uh, of the body and the saddle, and the the angle of the saddle too. I guess quality yeah, you have it, that, you have it so, yeah, yeah. That, what I'm talking about when you are <clears throat> um, actually this biomechanics it's not about mechanics it also works on a cellular level how your different parts of your body are aligned together 
how they're working together. And um, that's a very interesting thing. It's called mechanotransduction. 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 That's, that's, called, that's how our bodies are shaped by a movement. That's a, you see, that's a positive feedback loop. Is it like that? I've just written it. It's called mechanotransduction. And that's very interesting to see. You see, um, for example, uh, your, um, did you see dogs tucking the tail and wagging the tail? When they wag the tail, they are happy and they untuck. What they do is called a closing the pelvic outlet, closing and opening the pelvic outlet. And that's actually yeah. something to do with the uh, fight and flight reaction. Yeah, because when they put the, the tail between the legs, they're scared. Exactly, when they threw the tail between the legs, that's the, uh, that's the strong fight and flight response. That's a stress response. And you also, you contract the abdominal muscles and you contract the diaphragm. You cannot really breathe properly with your lower abdomen. When dogs probably, they don't think about it because they never, in the unless they have very, very bad owners, they never in the uh, chronic stress response. And that's the chronic stress response. So chronic stress response is not in our genes, only acute response, you see? Um, and that's what can be actually in the, in the cyclist, because if they have this posture and they are tucking the tail, they actually activating, uh, that's a very interesting one, activating stress response, which everything works differently in stress response. They stop the immunity, basically. The immunity stops working because that's under prioritized. You have to run from the tiger first and then you can uh, uh, work with flu or with cancer, you know? But if you're in chronic stress response, the immunity gets switched off. It, and that's a very um, an known fact from, <clears throat> from physiology. So when we have the issues with pelvic floor, you know, with pelvic outlet, the pelvic floor, that's normally considered as issues of aging. But that's wrong. That's totally wrong. It's about um, accumulating stress response. That's about tucking the tail. That's the problem with pelvic floor. So see, um, that's um, also another aspect of health versus fitness. You have to be aware about it. When you're aware about the value of changing something, then you can start the 50 weeks course for athletic performance and combining it not only with fitness, but with health. Yeah. This kind of things. You see, that's a very, very concrete things. And I have an idea actually how to work with this. And we're going to work with cyclists um, that are asking questions. <laughs> I want you to ask questions. Do it now. <laughs> okay, we have uh, 10 minutes. Guys, what is I want you, someone of you to take seat, ask questions now. Please... Um, there's a seat in the middle. We have actually possibilities for two seats. So if there's yeah. two people that will no, turn to conversation, please. Or just, just to write something in the live chat. So you have 10 minutes now. Otherwise, we'll, we'll close in five minutes. Um, just to be ready for the next, next session. And uh, to drink a cup of tea. Because uh, I, think it's fantastic. Tea. I think it's fantastic, Misha, that, uh, that by... Uh, asking people to be more aware of their bodies, more aware of the processes, uh, we can actually um, improve the cyclist's performance. But, you know, it's it's funny because cyclists, the ones I've seen, spend a fortune on their machines. Yeah. They spend a fortune. Um, I, I'm not a – but I'm just a casual cyclist, and my, my attitude is that the heavier my machine is, the more effort, I'm, the more effort it's going to need to take it. But some people they spend thousands, you know, something I don't know, up to ten thousand pound for a Kevlar frame and a, uh, everything like this, right? But the the energy source, the motor, the motor for the bike, they're taking no no interest and no concern, or just just a relative interest. It's a very funny thing, you know. That this machine you've just paid ten thousand dollars pounds whatever for is not going to be 
is not going to give you the optimum performance unless the motor you're also paying attention to the motor exactly exactly that's what it is that's what it is exactly and um, i don't really understand why it's so uh, hard to understand and that's but that's you know it requires uh, the uh, <clears throat> it's about awareness the change the change the the change in understanding really and it requires the change from target oriented way of working into process oriented way of working and that's a paradigm that's the paradigm change yeah. okay now guys listen um i want to make a little um advertisement here for cycle systems um for cycle systems academy and they are um that's the uh, the link on the facebook and um there's also a link on the twitter somewhere yes it's here it's here so um if you're an active cyclist and you're you're participating in, yeah. if you're participating races and things like this can you adopt this uh, protocol over a period of time without it uh affecting your your current performance because i think what a lot of athletes will worry about that if they they feel they're very fine-tuned and if they change that if they tweak something or make a major change they're going to you know lose it and lose all their performance but as i understand the reason it's 50 weeks is we take small steps so they'll be able to build these small steps gradually into their uh, into their training regime and what have you so it's very so very small steps and it's doable it's highly highly doable because you get both uh three videos a week with some particular health and uh, performance issue and then you get also nudging to not stop and i have uh, because i was working with uh, uh psychophysiological mental training and um uh with athletes so i do a lot of nudging and the, you, get, you get the files with nudging every Thursday, like 10, 15 minutes talk when you work. And then we get this. And so we 50 weeks with small steps. Um, so um, I don't have to start. At, uh, uh, at, I don't have to forget everything and go back to basics and therefore lose all my, you know, if I'm a competitive cyclist or competitive golfer, I don't have to do that. I can I can integrate these small changes uh into my into my training into my performance without the risk of uh falling off the cliff exactly exactly it's it's possible it's possible so here's the link to the course that's the course yeah okay yeah so um well, that's it. We're almost uh... so subscribe and uh, uh, join uh, us on board, and it's, it's going to be great. It's it's already. Yeah, great. I have a lot really? of questions through Twitter. So, guys, if you uh, want to ask me, um, uh, my Twitter address is it's called Red Group One, and here you go. That's Red Group One. Follow me, ask questions about resilience, physical resilience, athletic resilience, about health and everything. And I hope to see you next Monday. And uh, now we have different courses. We have courses in three languages, actually English, Danish, and Russian about health. We have a course in English, athletic performance. We are already being asked, I can see that uh, about the course in Danish for athletic performance. Mm, maybe we're gonna do it let's think let's think about it and um now we also have course for especially for tennis athletes called breathing for tennis and um we love tennis and i have uh, lots of uh, very very interesting thing, things about mental resilience for athletes also 50 weeks course so um now i'm doing everything we start it maybe next week let's see if it's possible so uh, contact me ask what you want and i hope to see you monday so um subscribe also on my site on our site here at sakharov.com uh, subscribe uh, on the articles and then the end of the every article there's a possibility to subscribe for yeah. Do it. so it's um 10 minutes to seven
any questions guys or uh, we stop please write live chat if you want something answered so we wait for a minute you can also find uh, Misha on Quora exactly I'm uh, actually answering many questions about health and uh, sleep right now people are really thinking about a lot about sleep hacking so um, sleep hacking and um, may maybe I will show you on Quora just a second give you my link uh, with the with the questions that I answer just a second uh, da -da -da -da. Mm -hmm. okay. Um oh okay I cannot I cannot show this content that content I don't understand but um doesn't matter here yes here you got here you go and there's no and there's no questions so we say thank you yeah. for joining us today we will be Sorry. very very happy to have lots of questions next time please you can tweet you can write me a mail you can um, just join our session next time please be inquisitive in everything also in your life bye